All right, I have an iPhone 6s here, and I've been mucking around with um, this uh, AP to LCM reset line uh, for a while now, and I finally got a 6s Plus in the other day with um, what was it? It was okay. So the guy said he sent it to two, two different shops, and no display still. Okay. Uh, they, I think, I don't know what they did, but it looked like they, they definitely worked in the backlight system. The backlight, you know, I mean, when you're dealing with no, no image, I mean, the backlight system is kind of secondary. You know, you want to fix the image first, go to the, go to the, um, backlight after that. Okay. So, I got the 6S Plus, okay, and, uh, you know, I, obviously I check for, for AP to LCM, uh, reset. And let me show you on ZXW. Alright, we'll go to the 6S Plus. We'll go to the 6S Plus first, and then we'll uh, kind of go back to the 6S that I'm working on here. So I got the 6S Plus, and um, is this thing even working? My mic. I can't really hear myself very well in this thing. Okay, so 6S Plus. I uh, before I did anything, you know, I just made sure that I'm getting voltages on all these lines right here, and uh, let's see, I think it was this one. Okay, so AP to LCM reset. What is it for? I still don't know what exactly what it's for, but I, I have, I, I think it, I believe it's an output signal from the LCD. I'm sorry, it's an input control signal, which means that it should be receiving 1.8 volts. Yes. So, let's see. Let's think about this. So LCM to chestnut power enable is an output that goes to chestnut. I know I'm just kind of rambling right now, but LCM to chestnut power enable, okay, takes the PP1V8 LCM and the photon alive, 1.8 volts, um, which uh, tells chestnut to turn on. Um, another input is AP to LCM reset, but is AP to LCM reset required for the display to power on? It is not. Uh, so in my limited testing, the only two lines that are required are Photon Alive and PP, PP1V8 LCM. Alright, it's confusing. Let me bring up the schematics. Maybe we can get some more up. Uh, ideas about this thing. Okay. Chestnut. Okay, chestnut. Uh, let's not do chestnut. Let's do AP to LCM. LCM reset. Okay, display control signals, alright? And this is a success. So, as you can see, LCM power enable is output, and AP to LCM is a uh, input. And this is another input, which I'm not certain if this plays a part into display lighting up or not. I don't think it does. Uh, okay, now let's look for PP1V8 LCM. Okay, display power, okay. So, See, it doesn't tell you what's input and what's output here, but we know that PP1V8 LCM is an input to the display. Uh, and I don't see Photon Alive here. Uh, it may be in the 6 and 6 plus only. Let me see if, let me see if Photon Alive is here or not. I'm, kind of, I'm really rambling now. Okay, there is no Photon Alive. Okay, that's fine. So it looks like the only really the only real input to get the display to light up is PP1V8 here. That's really the only input in the 6S 6S Plus. Okay. Um, and these are both inputs as well, but I don't believe. Well, I know that the reset is not required, and I know that uh, I don't know about this one though. But I, I suspect that it's probably not required to. Uh, uh, provide uh, power or provide power to chestnut in order 
to turn on the display. All right. So, like I said, I've been going back and forth with this thing, and I got a 6s plus that came in, and uh, you know, I ch I checked this checked this line right here, and sure enough, it was short of the CPU. All right. So I took this resistor off, uh, checked for short, and it was it was definitely shorted to ground at this point. So I removed it, and I I told my I told my guy to turn it on or to just reassemble it and send it back to him for the inspection fee. As he was uh, as he uh, was reassembling it, he noticed that there was an image in the on the screen, and it was just an Apple logo. And uh, and we knew that the backlight was blown, so I was like, hey, you know, why don't you uh, fix the backlight system, and and we'll kind of go from there. So he fixed the backlight system, and sure enough, everything. Everything worked worked fine, and uh, and here's the thing: I I had to remove this resistor here, and uh, I had to remove this uh, capacitor here. So I know that there was absolutely no power getting to to this uh, pin right here. But yet everything worked fine, and there was there was nothing wrong with the everything worked fine on the on the phone. Everything I tested everything, and it, it baffled me. You know what is this AP to LCM reset line? I I don't I still don't really know exactly what it is, but I imagine. Um, and it's not needed. That's the thing. So I don't quite understand what it's for. Uh, but anyways, let's let's go back to my point here. <laughs> my point is this. Uh, let's go back to the success. How do you fix a short on AP to LCM reset on a success? I'm gonna show you. Yeah. All right. So AP to LCM reset is uh, let's say th these okay so basically these three components right here one's a resistor one's a filter one's a capacitor okay which goes to this pin right here all right so if I test this pin if I remove this resistor right here and and check this point to to ground it really should not be short to ground all right but yet when I go to this phone right here and put my multimeter in continuity mode, uh, it's going to beep to ground. Beep. All right, you hear the beep. It's 1.2 ohms. Is that <clears throat> is it supposed to be like that? No, it's not. So I just removed all these components and the display still didn't light up. Okay, and I and I got to thinking. I'm like, okay, I know this AP to LCM reset line is not required for the screen to power up. So what is causing the um, the display to not power on? Right? I mean, it just doesn't make sense because the only input to turn a screen on is PP1V8 LCM. Okay, so where's PP1V8 LCM? PP1V8 LCM is this line right here. Or I'm sorry, this is PP1V8, which is the main power line. Uh, for the 1.8 volt coming directly from the PMIC here, okay. So in order to get PP1V8 LCM, it goes through this filter here, and and uh, you know it pumps in PP1, uh, you know, uh, 1.8 volts to the to the screen to power to you know, and it sends it to the enable line over here to this enable line, which goes over to chestnut, which goes over to chestnut chestnuts on the back. I know this is kind of high level stuff so uh, bear with me here. It goes over a chestnut and then boom it sends these 5.7 5 volt lines to back to this to the L, to the uh, display here and, and it powers on. Okay so here's what I did. That took about 10 minutes but uh, here's what I did. Okay so the PP1V8 is constant, okay? So you don't need a screen to, to test it, okay? So I'm going to plug this in, and and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my multimeter voltage mode, and uh, I'm going to test this pin right here. And so I'm getting zero volts right now, okay? And this is the test point to PP1V8, and I'm getting 1.8 volts here. So why is it that I'm getting 1.8 volts here, but zero volts here when they're when they're technically the same point, right? So let's look at it from a, from ZXW. All right. So ZXW shows that this point and this point are connected. All right. CPU uh, and these other components right here. Uh, PMIC powers it. Okay. So the underlying problem is actually not. 
well it is pp pee -pee. it is uh ap to L lcm reset that's part of the problem but the main problem is that uh pp1v8 is not you're not we're not getting pp1v8 essentially um again i'll do it again but the test point gives me 1.8 volts and this point gives me 0 volts all right so whenever somebody changes the screen some, for some some reason or somehow uh this line right there which goes to the PMIC on the back of the logic board uh gets disconnected um I, I know that I'm still getting 1.8 volts, you know, because the test point gives me 1.8 volts, all right? So the fix is to uh, pump your filter that was that was here, uh, connected to the test point. Test point, you know, the end of the filter goes back over to the capacitor over here. So from here, it, and this side is supposed to go to this capacitor here. So uh, you put the filter, and then uh, you just run a jumper to this um, capacitor right here, and that'll get you your screen back. So that is what I did, and voila, we're back in business. <clears throat> the AP, <clears throat> I mean, why is, I mean, I still don't understand why the AP to LCM reset line is shorted. Um, there's probably a short in the CPU somewhere or maybe in the trace in the logic board, but um, the phone still works without without that line. Um, and you know what, I haven't actually tried putting the resistor, the filter, and the capacitor back yet, uh, but I mean it's better than a brick, right? Um, so, and nothing really seems to be affected. I can turn the display off, turn it back on, no problem. And, uh, you know, if I turn it off, raise to wake works. Should work. You see that? So, it's, so raise to wake works. There it is. And everything works on it. I mean, so, the... Uh, And I don't think I'm going to spend too much more time on it. You know, I know that works. And I know that's a solution to the problem. And um, that's really about it. I don't think I'm going to... Um, I don't think I'm going to figure out why... Try to figure out why AP to LCM reset is shorted. Uh, maybe it'll come to me later, but I know that this is a solution for it. And I think we just go with it. All right. And I'm going to kind of go over, I haven't posted a video in about a month here, but uh, basically I've been, I set up shop, uh, I set up shop, I got a little office space, and I've been really busy doing that, I guess, part of it, it's part of the thing, <clears throat> and I'm in the process of taking the business to the next step, whatever that means. Um, I, you know, I've got a lot of ideas lined up, and I, I got to the point where I, I just couldn't do it myself anymore. It was just, it was too much, and I was getting stressed out, and and uh, I needed some help. And <clears throat> I don't like asking for help. I like uh, doing everything myself, but it just wasn't feasible, and I wasn't really enjoying it anymore. So, so anyways. The, uh, I'm going to try to post some more videos soon. I got uh, some things lined up, but not enough time in the day to to finish them all. You know, especially when I'm trying to do stuff like this. You know, this this stuff kind of takes quite a bit of time. Um, and it, when you have touch IC jobs coming in left and right, you know, piling up. Uh, but anyways, I got I got a I got my guy Sanjeev now. He's probably going to watch this video. So what's up, Sanjeev? Um, He's he's he he's done a great job. He's been doing this for about a month now, and uh, started doing touch IC jobs on the second day, 
and he's quickly catching up to the amount of touch ICs that I've done, uh, which is great. Um, and uh, my hope is to give him everything, really. That's my hope, to basically just pass on most of the repairs to him, and, and I'll do some of them, but I'll be working more on uh, the business side of things. And uh, and that is that. So stay tuned. I'm gonna. I think what I'm gonna do is maybe get the Sanjeev and the Mike or Sanjeev and Jason show for those who don't know who I am. Jason, Mike, whatever. <laughs> uh, and we might do some live streaming. We got some ideas, but uh, again, not enough time in the day to do them. So, but we're going to try to get going here again soon. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys.